I'm Kerry and this is my 1957 Cessna 188. The Cessna 180 was in production from 1953 to 1981, during which time 6,183 of the aircraft were produced. They are still highly coveted today because of their reputation as very capable Bush aircraft. It became known as the Sky Wagon because just like the family station wagon, if you could pile everyone in and close the doors, it would take you wherever you wanted to go. In 1964, Geraldine Mock used a Cessna 180 to become the first woman to solo fly around the world. In this video, we're going to talk to Carrie about this beautiful airplane and then take it for a flight. So let's talk to Carrie and learn more about his Cessna 180A. What got me into aviation is it's kind of by accident. I ended up winning a scholarship with the Civil Air Patrol back in the uh, mid 80s uh, to go to the Texas Wing Solo Encampment. Couldn't afford to fly uh, back then, so uh, pretty much young guy, teenager, couldn't really afford it. So ended up uh, flying a lot of ultralights and airplanes held together with bubble gum and bailing wire, you know. So. Uh, it wasn't until you know later later on that I decided to finish up my uh, private pilot's license, and uh, it wasn't until later I got my commercial and, and did all the advanced ratings to go to work for the airline. Uh, I owned numerous airplanes. Uh, going through my initial uh, pilot certificates, I would I would buy an airplane, get a rating, sell it. Buy another airplane, get a rating, sell it. I, I generally made money on each one. So instead of going a lot of money into debt like people do these days. Um, I ended up making money learning how to fly, and uh, I ended up having a, a light twin uh, right before I went to the regionals, and sold it, bought a pitch, taught myself air acro, and well, this airplane, uh, it's a 1957 uh, Cessna 180A, at least the, that's what the data plate says. Um, it's got a lot of, it's had a lot of uh, things replaced over the years, but uh, it's highly modified, it's not, not original hardly at all. But um, uh, this airplane uh, is the kind of the holy grail of uh, backcountry bush flying. And um, we have taken up uh, doing a lot of flying in, in Idaho, uh, my brother and I. So uh, it's, it's kind of the, a Cadillac for that kind of flying. It, it'll haul anything you put in it. It's uh, fast enough to, to make you know, long cross countries fairly uh, quickly. And it's slow enough it can get in and out of a lot of uh, very short strips. It was modified back in the late 90s with the uh, Continental 0520 uh, by Texas Skyways. Um, it had the 88 inch prop put on it back then. Uh, Snyder speed kit, Horner wingtips, um, it's got extended baggage uh, and then they, they updated it all with a improved GPS. Uh, the airplane will uh, take off in uh, three to five hundred feet depending on the weight and it'll land in a little over that, uh, four to six hundred feet um, at light weights. Uh, if you open it up, uh, it'll cruise 150, 155 knots true at altitude, uh, which is on par with uh, you know older Bonanzas. So it's uh, it's it's quite quick for for a fixed gear airplane. Uh, we're going to take it to uh, we're going to take it to Mina to the sheet metal shop and have all the control surfaces reskinned next year. Uh, probably put an autopilot in it, a little bit of updated avionics. In the summertime, we'll make a, a trip out to to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, generally, we just use it for cheeseburgers. It's not a hundred dollar hamburger anymore now. No, nah, it's about a two hundred fifty dollar hamburger now. Uh, the airplane was painted in 1996. Interior was done in 1996, and um, Last year, uh, Oscar at uh, Hangar 11 uh, did a, a paint restoration and ceramic coating on it, and uh, it'll save me from having to repaint it anytime soon. Now, I, I wanted to plug Oscar because he's he, he's the one that he's the reason it looks as good as it does. Okay. All right, were well, you ready to go fly it then? Sure. All right, let's do it. So how is it with the tail wheel here? I mean, I get you have decent visibility here. You can kind of see over the cowling a little bit. Yeah, this one's not too bad. Yeah, one uh, seventies aren't bad. You can see right over the nose of one seventy. Yeah, um, one ninety five. You, you, and on this one, really, that that quadrant over there is kind of obscured. Right. So I just take for granted that nothing's going to run out in, you know, <laughs> yeah. in front of me. But um, yeah. But otherwise, you just S turn a lot. You know. 
You ever have any problems with people driving out here and uh, oh God. messing with airplanes? It's a nightmare, man. It, the, the vehicular traffic out here is just absolutely horrendous. Yeah. They used to have a restaurant down there yeah. that, that attracted a bunch of summer bombs. Hicks traffic at Spearman on Sierra Alpha Delta is 10 miles west, descending through 2,600 feet, inbound for 3 2 at Hicks. Takes all the math out of it, it calculates the drop point. Yeah, it just say it gives you what, it drop 50, that would drop 40, so that's pretty good. Yep, that's nice. On the RPM gauge there. Fixed traffic experimental throughout the Delta now five miles west, sending through 1800 feet, inbound for three, two at Hicks. Fixed traffic, uh, Skywagon 9712 Bravo is departing three, two Hicks via uh, straight out departure. So you start flying the tail about 50 and off the ground by about 70? As soon as the tail's off the ground, it'll fly. Yeah. I just don't, I don't force it. Yeah, there's no reason to hurry. And if you pitch it back to 80, it'll show you about 1,700 feet a minute with that with this power setting. Yeah, well, we're still doing 110 and doing 1,000 feet a minute. Not bad. And I can hear that Skywagon from here. Wow. Just kidding. <laughs> Think you can hear it from there. How about being down here? <laughs> I mean, I can hear it from my house. <laughs> it is loud. Yeah, you gotta get the 520 in here, right? It's a big engine. Well, it's the prop that makes all that noise. Oh, right, the three blade, three three bladed prop. It's uh, that's 88 engine Mac 401, and uh, that propeller and engine combination at that RPM, it's uh, it's quite loud. So the the theory behind the three bladed prop, it doesn't really give you that much. Well, extra speed really, but it helps you climb better. Is that what it is? Yeah, you only add an extra blade if you don't have enough uh, diameter to break down the, you know. If you're diameter constrained, um, you add an extra blade. Um, yeah. Yeah, two blades, there's a little bit of blade interference. Three blades, there's more blade interference. But um, this is just for, you know, trying to trying to break down 280 horsepower in an 88-inch circle. Uh, doing 160, is that a, that's knots. That's uh, miles an hour on the outside. Miles an hour? Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you get it up uh, 10, 12. Thousand feet, it'll it'll true about 150, 155. Yeah. On the power All right, so we're about 145 knots now. 150. Uh, yeah, 145. Yeah. Indicated. Yeah. That's still pretty good down near low. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, 2300 RPM. For an airplane with the with the gear welded down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's 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 that is pretty good. And you say weight wise, I mean, if you can close the doors on it, basically, it's with, within the CG and all that, or the weight limits. Yeah, pretty much. If you can fit it in here, it'll haul it. Yeah. So when you go long distance in it, do you normally, uh, you, I mean, well, you just go the most comfortable altitude temperature wise, or do you normally, what do you do? Uh, when I'm, hey Andy, how do you hear this radio with more when I'm making a long trip in it, I'll, I'll typically pick the best altitude for the wind and the fuel, yeah. uh, fuel yeah. burn. Um, so when I go to, you know, up to the Pacific Northwest, I'll, I'll usually pick 10 to 12 or, you know, I've come. I've, 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 it's been up to 13 or so. I don't like to go up there without supplemental oxygen. Right, right. Uh, but it'll do it. It'll go all the way to probably 15, 16. Um, it's still got a lot of a lot of climb left in it at those yeah. altitudes. But typically, this thing drinks about 15 gallons an hour down low. So yeah. I, I, if I get up to 10 or 12, I can get that down to about 12 gallons an right. hour. So. And you know, what's what's 100 low that these days? Four or five bucks a gallon? Yeah, it's. 390 is the yeah. cheapest around here. Yeah, I'm sure you go up there in the Pacific Northwest quite a bit more than that. Yeah, it gets expensive. Yeah, it's a pretty versatile air airplane. I mean, you're nice and fast like this, but you can still do the soft field and off field landings and all that. Yeah, I, I can slow it down to about about 50 across the fence without worrying too much. Yeah. Um, 
this wing is uh, it's totally stock. There's no uh, lift enhancing right. uh, modifications to the wing at all besides the, the Horner wing tips. Uh, the Horner wing tips are supposed to give you a little bit of stall margin, but it's mainly uh, roll response that, that the uh, the wing tips yeah. make a difference in. But yeah, it's smooth air with a little bit of power. It'll it'll run right on right on up to the uh, red line there, middle of the yeah. yellow arc. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, it's pretty too. And you said this paint's 20 years old too, or something like that. Yeah. It is. It's, well, 20, it's 25 years old. It's been. It's definitely kept in a hangar. That's for sure. Yep. Oscar at, at Hangar 11 is the uh, the guy that uh, is responsible for the paint looking as good as it does. He he does excellent work. You said you put that ceramic coating on it. Yeah, it's got yeah. A, a John's 360 ceramic uh, coat job on it. That stuff's expensive, but man, it looks good. It does, and it it really repels the the water. Makes it real slick where the nothing yeah. sticks to it. Yeah. I put some of that on my my boat, or not the same stuff, but it's a ceramic coating. And I mean, it made it look great. It was expensive. It was like three or four hundred dollars a bottle. Do a touch and go at Keyser. Alrighty. Is there a grass strip out here? Uh, it's uh, it's asphalt, but it's okay. it's very 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 narrow. I never can find it. Just there, the is that it right there, the black one? Yeah, it's kind of hard to find. Is that it right there? Oh, look at that, I found it. Is this a, uh, somebody's private plane, I think, or is it public? It's a fly-in community, Okay. Yeah. Pretty narrow little runway. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty narrow. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's got a good amount of power. Bonanza zero zero Quebec is uh, turn final three two full stop. Thanks. Yeah, climb fifteen hundred feet a minute, seventy knots. Not bad. Now you've probably been out here. Uh what's this? Plant bush. Oh, okay. That's where Doug Jackson lives. Yeah. Down there. Okay. Six traffic three four Roman Victor is ten miles northwest. 2,500 descending for 3-2 hits. Oh, yeah, I see his hangar now. About 13 yeah. miles to the south. Inbound for land of information, uh, before stop. Durant. Somebody come up with an electric trim mod for these things. Oh, yeah, that must be a pain. Having to roll that all the time. You can't change speed, you know. I mean, yeah, you just, without adjusting the pitch. You just, you just dial the speed that you want into that, and it'll do it. But yeah. You try to slow down, you just have to... Drag on. I mean, you can slow down and think you slowed down. As as one minute of inattention, it'll go right back to the trim speed. That stable stabilizer is so much more powerful than trim tab. Uh, Doug's down in uh, Florida right now. I guess doing his uh, stole competition. Oh, is that what he's doing? Yeah. Six traffic three four Roman Victor's over Copeland two thousand inbound three two Hicks. No gas at Bridgeport. Huh. 
Yeah, you can really feel that power come in when you do it. 64 traffic, 34 Romeo Victor's on the 45 for left downwind, 32 Hicks. Yeah, cool. Cows didn't seem uh, too impressed. The card reader's not working, so nobody's getting any gas. Yeah, Bridgeport normally has cheapest, cheapest fuel around. Harvey left down wind, 32 Hicks, Brick. Uh, Hicks. Yeah, I used to have to have uh, like six cameras. Right traffic. I'd have three in here, three in here and then two on the wings. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. sometimes you more. Can pretty much, you can pretty much get any angle you want to on right. those. Right? Yeah. I mean, because I had to have one facing forward, one facing you, one facing me, and then one, you know, and the wing out there, and then another one on the tail, you know. Now, can you use the the footage simultaneously yeah. off of them? Yeah, I, I sync them up where they're together, and then, uh, yeah, it's it's the main thing has been the editing on this. There's a Cessna up there. I got it. But it's hard because I, I could have my editor do it, but he's not a pilot. And so he doesn't really know what's what, what's important and what's not. Make one more landing over here and head back. All right. Our bus traffic matter, so one two Bravo is uh, five miles to the west inbound. Left, left, left traffic three two or uh, three four. Uh, Bravo. Where are we going? Right there. All right. Ah, there it is. Okay. Which which uh, What's the name of this place? Prop Wash. Prop Wash. Okay. As it's important here to make uh, a runway clearing pass to uh, make sure that there's no uh, jackrabbits on the <laughs> runway. So first, the first pass is always a, a runway clearing pass. Bravo traffic, uh, 9712 Bravo is in the uh, right, left downwind for 34, or 35, sorry. Uh, Prop bus traffic, one two Bravo, left base three five. Traffic one two Bravo final three five. And one two Bravo is going around. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, that'll scare away any jackrabbits. Drop push traffic, one, two, Bravo, left, downwind, uh, three, five. Drop push traffic, one, two, Bravo, left, face to final, three, five. Nice one. Yeah, Bravo traffic, one two Bravo, back taxi three five. Bravo traffic, one two Bravo, will be departing uh, three five via left downwind departure. We'll do a, um, a somewhat max performance takeoff here. Okay. I got the flaps at 20. Props forward. We'll go ahead and wind it up.
Stay on left. Yeah. That's why. Off the ground about 50. Yeah, it didn't take a whole lot of runway. No. Hicks traffic, 9712 Bravo is about 5 to the north inbound for 3-2 uh, Hicks. Just a few buzzards out here. Yeah, I've been a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of big birds lately. Well, so I'm have to clean some bugs off. What's that? I have to clean some bugs off. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Just clean an hour ago. Next traffic matter, 712 Bravo is in the left downwind, 3 2 Hicks. Do I? Short approach here. Next traffic, 12 Bravo is in the left downwind, 3 2 will make a short approach, Hicks. Well, thank you, sir, for taking me up. Anytime, man. Yeah. Well, Kerry, you have a great airplane, and uh, thank you for taking me flying, man. All right, man, anytime. Yeah, well, I enjoyed it's, it. It's a cool bird. I'd love to fly it again with you sometime. All righty. We'll have to do it. Thank you. All right, thank you guys for tuning in uh, to Flying Duels. Please click subscribe. We really appreciate you. And uh, click the bell if you want to be notified when we post a new video. We'll see you on the next one.